I'm just gonna hurt you. Really, really bad. Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome to Just My Opinion Reviews. So now Warner Brothers, DC Entertainment and David Ayer decided to team up to deliver the next comic book feature, Suicide Squad. There's a lot of anticipation for this movie. How did I feel about it? Did I like it? Did I love it? Did it suck? Well, let's find out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Now, as you already know, this is directed by David Ayer. He did uh, Fury with Brad Pitt and uh, Shia LaBeouf, the guy that did the Transformers movies. And I like that movie. I don't own it on Blu-ray or DVD, but I like it. And he also directed uh, End of Watch with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, who else is in this? Um, I forgot. Oh yeah, Michael Pena. I cannot believe I didn't. I forgot his name. But anyway, and I really like this movie. Um, you know, hence why I bought it. So anyway, David Ayer wants to come and deliver the Suicide Squad. Besides me knowing what the comic book is about, because if you look around, I, I do know comic books. I like comic books. I have the Batman um, Assault on Arkham Blu-ray DVD Digital HD. And I've only seen this twice. And when I saw it, the, and this is what Suicide Squad is loosely based off of. And when I saw it the first time, I was underwhelmed. I wasn't too impressed. It was okay. It wasn't one of the best out of the 20, I think 27 or 28 DC movies that uh, come out now. But since the trailer leaked last Comic-Con in 2015, the average moviegoers and a number of my friends have always been want to know, oh, what, what's this Suicide Squad, Brandon? What's, what's that about? What's going on there? Can you tell me a little bit about it? And, you know, um, I watched it again with a friend, and uh, she liked it a lot, and I liked it a lot, too. And it actually got me ex more excited for the movie. And just one more little tidbit. Here's the uh, DC Encyclopedia here. Um, just to let you know how much I am into all of this content. Now, Comic-Con 2015, not this year, but last year when the trailer first dropped, well, it didn't drop some a-hole uh, recorded in Hall H in San Diego and it leaked online. And of course, the studio didn't want it to, um, didn't want the, the mass population of the world to see a bad, low-res quality. So they went ahead and released it to the public. And I loved it. I mean, and to be honest with you, out of all the trailers and the TV spots and the featurettes and the interviews and the posters and all that good stuff, that first trailer impressed me the most. I don't know why, but me, when a new trailer drops, if I love it, I can sit there and put it on a playlist and let trailers play back, you know, forward over and over and over again. And if I really like a certain trailer or movie, I'll watch it three, four, five times in a row. Trying to nitpick in and out, trying to nitpick here and there, in and out, trying to just find any nugget or Easter egg or whatever. That's just what I do. And the first Suicide Squad trailer impressed me the most. And I say that because just in the, 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 the coming trailers after that, I mean, they wasn't bad, but there was just nothing about them that made me say, oh, my gosh, I cannot wait to see this movie. I even know with the all star cast with Jai Courtney and Joel Kinnaman and Adewale and Kanoe Agbaje and um, and Will Smith and um, and anybody else. I mean, you had this phenomenal cast, and I just wasn't excited about it. I don't know if it, it was this right here that put a, a bad taste in my mouth, and I don't think that will be it because we're so used to general public. It's just so used to seeing heroes going to go fight the bad guys, but you're never really seeing bad guys versus evil. And I remember last year, that's something that David Ayer or somebody uh, from the uh, studio, that was one of their main selling points. And it got me interested. And like I, I said that because the, the concept of bad guys teaming up Avenger style to go save the day. I mean, that's just an interesting concept in itself, let alone it being a uh, comic book property. Um, so that's one of the things that held me on. But the, the rest of the trailers to me, um, it just seemed like they were well cut trailers with uh, a nice soundtrack in the background. It just did the trailers didn't seem like a form of art to me. And trailers are mini movies. They're form of, they're a form of art in my opinion. And I just wasn't getting that 
from the uh, last few Suicide Squad trailers and TV spots. So going into this movie, my expectations were mediocre. I wasn't like, oh my gosh, Suicide Squad, uh, I don't want to see this. And I wasn't, it wasn't like Civil War or Avengers, like, oh my God, I can't wait. I'm counting down the days and the hours when I'm dancing to the theater. I was mediocre. And I will say that I'm glad that I had those ex expectations. I, I think um, that had to do with the level of enjoyment that I did have in the film. And the just let's just go ahead and get into that. I've been talking for long enough already about the characters. My favorite character is Deadshot, uh, Frank Lawton, played by Will Smith. Now, um, he had the most depth. In the movie, he had the most, um, you know, the, the best backstory. He had the best lines, the best comedy. He had most of the screen time, which is expected. This is Will Smith. You know, movies don't sell tickets anymore for the most part because of the movie star or, or, or movie actor or actress is more of the property. But Will Smith, you know, can bring in a lot of dollars. Uh, you know, there's my mom and my brother were saying that the only reason they're slightly interested in this movie is because of Will Smith alone. But he is the best part of the movie by far, in my opinion. Um, he kicked a lot of ass. He was funny, like I said. My only complaint with his character is I don't really feel like it was Deadshot or Frank Lawton. I feel like this was Will Smith. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because Will Smith is Will Smith. He's great. He he's you know has charisma coming out of the wazoo everywhere. I mean, the guy is just a likable guy on screen. There's nothing you can say negative about him. And if you can put him, you know, let me know in the comments. I challenge you, uh, but give me a thumbs up as well. But, you know, he, he was the best. I, I liked him. You know, like I said, he had backstory. My second favorite has to be somewhat of a tie between the Joker and Harley Quinn played by Jared Leto and Margot Robbie. Um, they're both crazy as hell. Uh, we all know this, but see the to me, and I'm not a D, even though I have all this DC stuff, I'm not a DC expert. Just tipping over the Marvel, I know more about Marvel than I do DC. But anyway, to me, they're they're both just psychotic, raving lunatics. Just it doesn't make any sense. But to me, there's still two types of crazy. When Harley Quinn, you know, Mister J, and all of that. To me, she's crazy, but she doesn't know she's crazy. I always thought of Joker as crazy, but he knows he's crazy, but doesn't care that he knows he's crazy. I mean, he's a comic book character. He knows he's a comic book character. And the reason why I say that is, the and, and bringing it up in this movie, and the two prominent characters, everybody wanted to see him. Uh, this isn't Joker's movie, and that's fine. He did have enough screen time, and I kind of kind of want to say that he may have had a, a slightly too much screen time, but you know that, that's no complaint there. But uh, Harley Quinn, um, Margot Robbie, she did a great job. Um, they kind of gave some backstory to how she, her character came to be. I wasn't too in love with it because, to be honest with you, it did not make that much sense. I kind of had to write in the stuff that didn't make sense from my own knowledge. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. And Harley Quinn is not even a comic book character. Um, so don't rip me up in the comments. She's not a comic book character. She was made up in the animated cartoon. And correct me if I'm wrong, if I, I, if I said that. But uh, anyway, in this movie, there she was great until a point at the end where she was just humanized a little too much for me. She just didn't turn. It was this one scene to where... The Harley Quinn just snapped off and she was actually a person, a human, or the character before she went, you know, uh, bat ape crazy or whatever. And I did not like that. Uh, but other than that, my next favorite character, I want to say, is Killer Croc, played by Adewale and Kanoe Agbaje, I, I believe is the way you pronounce his name. And the only thing I didn't like about his character is they should have had him talk a lot more. Because when he talked, I don't want to say it was scary, but it was menacing. It was threatening. I I, I didn't want to make this guy mad because I felt he would just eat my face off with, you know, one little chew or whatever. And that was cool. There wasn't too much uh, of his of his role that came after that. Um, I also did like, um, who else did I like? It wasn't that character. I don't want to name that yet. It wasn't that character. Oh, Diablo, uh, played by, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Jay Hernandez. And I, I don't know. I don't know too much about Diablo. I don't know too much about Jay Hernandez. I liked his character. I liked the person that he was, but I did not like what he did. 
he just wasn't using his fire Diablo powers too much. Uh, I mean, there were times where they had a good plot point to why he wouldn't do it, and it made sense somewhat. But if you, I mean, I don't want to spoil it for you here, but if you, I, I don't know. I mean, the character had nothing. I don't, I don't want to say he had nothing to lose because at one time he had nothing to lose, but at another time he felt like he was fighting for everyone in the world. Like, oh, I love my friends and I want to save my friends. So. I mean, that's one complaint there about the stuff that he did, but who he was as a man, as a person, as a character, I like that. I I mean, he made some mistakes in the past. He owned that shit, and the reason why I said it just like that, you have to see the movie, you'll know why I said it like that, but I like this character, but there, I mean, they could have did more with, his, with what he was actually supposed to do with his abilities. I mean, when people are trying to kill you, I want you to be blasting shit out of them with your firepowers. That just makes sense to me. All the other characters, I'm not saying that I didn't hate them. I, like, I, I'm not saying that I didn't not hate them. I'm not saying that I hated them, but I wasn't in love with them. Um, Captain Boomerang, played by Jai Courtney, that was just okay. Katana, you know, there was nothing to her character at all other than she had a uh, soul-capturing Katana sword. Uh, Joel Kinnaman as Rick Flagg, you know, he was okay. And uh, Cara uh, Della Veen as the Enchantress. Um, yeah, that was probably the worst, um, uh, part of this movie. I mean, that I did not like it at all. Um, it was just too much. I mean, this is the third DCCU movie in their cinematic universe or however you want to call it. Yeah. Man of Steel, BVS, and now uh, Suicide Squad and a guy that likes comics. As you see, they went too far in the realm of comic book lore even for me so i can imagine an average movie goer that just wants to see a few famous stars pop in a movie are like what the hell am i watching because all that enchantress stuff was dumb and it just absolutely made no sense to me and that was just i was gonna say at the end of the movie well, the part that pissed me off the most was at the end of the movie. The stuff that came proud of that, what they were showing in Enchantress's powers, that was actually cool because I don't know anything about her character. I mean, I could look it up real quick and read to you guys. Um, hey, let, let's. if you're watching this, you like comic book stuff, so you wouldn't care. If it takes me too long to get Enchantadora, that's not Enchantress. What are her powers? Could it animate objects, also her own appearance, and levitate mystic tricks and concealed in her hat? Enchantress. Okay, that's not what they did in the movie. Um, so let's not, let's ignore that. Uh, but in the movie, as far as her powers are concerned, it was kind of cool, but it was kind of confusing. Uh, but I want to touch on that later. But one of the biggest sins of this movie to me and I'll go ahead and say this, guys. My expectations were mediocre, but Suicide Squad, I, I honestly just wasn't impressed. It wasn't a bad movie, but it wasn't a great movie either. And the main reason why is the tone of the film. The, the, you know, it's what I want. And it wasted time, too, because towards the beginning of the film, it appears that it's not going to waste any time. And you're just, you know, you're hitting the ground running and you're getting to know the Suicide Squad. And they do this roll call. And the first character is with, Frank uh, Lawton, Deadshot, Will Smith. And I love that. That was cool. But then they started going down every single character. And it was just like forced exposition. I'm like, okay, I mean, this is, and this, this roll call is being told over a dinner table. And I mean, it, they just should have had a movie slate or whatever. One of these things that said, okay, exposition scene snap or whatever, because the scene, one of the scenes that's in the trailer, it was so blatantly obvious that it was just set up to explain all the characters in the Suicide Squad. Now, you're, everybody's not like me. Everybody's not going to understand the majority of all the characters, and they may want some introduction. That's cool. That's fine. But there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. And I say that this movie did it the wrong way is because right after they gave us a roll call of the first 60% of the characters, the next exact scene after that was pretty much the same exact thing, but from a different perspective and a different audience. So I'm sitting there 
initially watching it like, okay, this dead shot roll call is cool. You know, uh, they show who he is. There's some lines of dialogue. Then some graphics pop up showing who he is, what his weapons are, and all that good stuff. And then you get a little action scene or whatever. That's cool. But as I'm watching the rest of the characters, I'm getting bored. I'm like, guys, there is, you know, I mean, I'm just sitting there watching it like, why can't they just have the characters in a group together? They're all crazy. They all have different personalities and weird social issues. So the conversation is going to be awkward anyway. And just have them talk to each other to learn what uh, each other's abilities are. And while the characters are teaching each other, it's also teaching the audience and also not wasting time. You're knocking out two or three birds with one stone instead of just, you know, forced exposition and scenes that repeat itself over and over and over from the next scene. And, you know, at that point in time, I was just like, man, I hope this movie is good. And so far, I'm just kind of like, huh, okay, you know, when are we going to get some good action? But then we get to the part where the whole team is coming together, the Suicide Squad. And, you know, once again, I'm disappointed with the tone. And I, I, I spoke on the tone, and let, let me actually address that. The reason why the tone is so bad for me is because all the random soundtracks that they came they just threw in the movie over the past 30 years at one point we were getting eminem uh then he's back back again and he's back back uh. and then another uh scene then like five minutes later we're getting spirit in the sky or rocking in the sky and then before that we're getting some song that came out in the 80s and it's just like this just it's just random popular music of all these different genres and it has nothing to do with superhero movies or killing people or bad guys or kicking ass there's nothing epic about it i mean every time the characters in the movie are getting ready to do something cool they have to throw in this whack-ass song they're just like what are we doing i'm not pumped up i'm not excited i'm not I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not curious to see what's going on with the bad guys coming out. I don't want to hear Eminem. I don't want to rockets in the sky or, or whatever the song is. I'm just sitting there like, man, this is really disappointing. And this is really letting me down. But everything is not bad. There are, the movie is funny. Um, the character, I did name some characters that I like towards uh, early in the movie. But it's just as soon as things are getting good. All right, we're getting there. A whack ass song. And then as soon as things get good, a whack ass song. And it's just something stupid that doesn't make sense with the plot. And then when we get some backstory to give you more uh, character development, something else stupid happens. And it's just like, okay, um, I'm not liking this at all. And then I'm just so disappointed for a movie that I wasn't even had high expectations for. And the whole gist of the suicide squad is in my opinion the way i understand it let's say the crooked government does something that they're not supposed to do and they can't go public about it and hey superman come save us or whoever because superman if he was smart or whatever be like man what the hell was you doing this for in the first place why are you trying to genetically mutate rabbits and elephants you, you know, I'm being silly, but, you know, it's, it's like, okay, let's create a task force of people that if we mess up, they can come clean it up under the rug. And if they get caught, we can, you know, I understand that. But as far as the story and the plot within this movie and how they brought that together, it was somewhat non-existent. I mean, just randomly, oh, we need to put a superhero team together. So let's just get all the bad guys. I mean, like, okay. You know, if that is your premise of doing it, the way they sold it in the movie didn't really give a great example of to why you needed certain characters to fill this Suicide Squad. I mean, Harley Quinn, she just goes around and swings a bat, but for some reason they're able to make her fight monsters in this, you know, and I can go down the line, but I really just don't want to because I don't care um, anymore. But just getting towards the end of this movie, it's just when the shit hit the fan and everything just started going downhill for me. There was more good than bad because I'm just sitting there like, I mean, you saw the trailers where Will Smith is like, all right, we're headed over to the circle uh, fire ring thing in the sky or whatever. It's pretty obvious that that's the end of the movie. But as I'm watching, I'm just like, okay, why, do, okay, you know, why are the good guys not doing this? Can they bomb this area? Can they just get 50,000 jets and helicarriers? Not helicarriers, but uh, 
Apache helicopters and just light this thing up. I mean, why are you sending in people on hand and feet uh, when they are no hostages that you know of, that the audience knows of? I mean, it's just things that are not making sense. And then especially with this enchantress thing and she's trying to do all. I mean, I think at one point she was actually talking like this, like, yeah, what's going on? You know, you want to come join me and my team? I mean, it's just so many inconsistencies with the final battle. I mean, do you remember last year, uh, that suck face movie by 20th Century Fox, the new Fantastic Four movie? One of the dumbest things in that movie was when Dr. Doom was look, walking down the hallway looking at people and their heads was exploding. I mean, that's a cool effect. It was badass. Now, that was one of the good things in that movie. But when he went to, uh, what was that dimension? Dimension X or Dimension Zero or something like that? He decided not to use his powers anymore. He wanted to do fisticuffs with the Fantastic Four. I mean, that's just freaking stupid. I don't understand that. There was something exactly like that in this movie. Here we have the bad guy that's able to just throw lightning bolts all over the planet. I mean, like, just... Let, let me let me back up. I mean, it just makes no... And I'm getting so angry the more that I think about it. And my score is actually going even further down than I initiated to give this movie. But early in the movie, uh, Enchantress is like, you know, oh, I'm getting more powerful. Tell me how to defeat your enemy or your wars or your machines. But then later on, she just decides to throw a billion gajillion lightning bolts in the sky, blowing up all types of shit all over the earth. And then right after that, decides to have fisty cuffs with people right in front of you. I don't understand that. And if you feel that I spoiled the movie for you uh, right there, I do apologize uh, for not giving you a spoiler warning. It's not really a spoiler warning. I mean, there's some people that, you know, that, that you know, you, you know it in the trailers. I mean, I'm not ruining anything for you. And, and just during that time, there were just so many, it, it was just, it was, it got to the point it was childish to where when, when, when the world is at stake or a city is at stake, I want to see everybody where the good on the good side, the bad side, the evil side. I want to see everybody that has some type of ability even if it's shooting a gun or swinging a bat or a sword to be in the fight, to be engaged. Don't just sit there. How would you feel if if you were trying to save the day and I'm on the sideline? Like, Come on, you get him, get him, get him. No, get your ass in here and fight too. And that's what just some of the characters were doing. Oh, it's my turn now. Blast. And I'm just like, man, what is going on? Like, this is just, this is just not good. But I mean... I didn't walk out the movie angry. I still walked out slightly entertained, but the movie just could have been so much better. And the, the plot just didn't make any sense. Um, I'm just like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you do this? Why aren't you doing that? You know, it, it was just too many holes for me that wasn't answered or explained. And, you know, but I will say that the mid credit scene, uh, was quite nice. It does get me a little bit excited for what's to come. And man, I want to spoil it for you so bad right now, but I'm not going to do that because um, there is something that they did pay a nice uh, tribute to and was faithful to the source material that gets me excited. And I just was, I didn't stay all the way at the end of the credits. I just didn't feel like it. But um, since Comic-Con just came out weekend before last, and we got the Wonder Woman trailer, the Justice League trailer, and all that. That was, I wasn't really feeling the Justice League. I love the hell out that Wonder Woman trailer. That was badass, but the Justice League trailer was just okay to me. And I was just kind of saying to myself, excuse me, why are they going this direction? As far as the plot, not the tone, but as far as the plot, just from some of the things uh, a certain character was saying in the story. And I'll just say that this mid-credit scene in the Suicide Squad uh, makes that Justice League trailer uh, make sense a lot more. Now, guys, if I had to rate the Suicide Squad out of a 1 out of 10, man, what do I want to give this thing? I'm going to give the Suicide Squad a 4.5 out of 10. Yes, a 4.5 out of 10. Sorry if that disappointed you guys, but that's just my opinion. So, have you seen Suicide Squad? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. 
If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you didn't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this video on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you become one of my subscribers and get all the content that I have to provide in the past and in the future. Look at the bottom of your screen there. You can see other places where you can find me, where, whether it's the website, Instagram, and Twitter at just my opinion 84 or like I said, head over to the website for a written review of this. So guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in for my opinion slash review for David Ayer's Suicide Squad. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.